Hey guys, what's up? Zyflin here, and welcome to the first episode of my Warframe Beginner's Guide for 2021. If you haven't signed up for our Warframe account yet, there is a referral link in the video description that will get you a 7-day XP booster that's going to speed up the process of leveling your Warframes and weapons. In this year's guide, my aim is to get anyone watching all the way from being a beginner up to being Master Rank 16. For those of you who don't know what Master Rank is, Master Rank is basically your accounts level that determines what gear you can and can't equip. At Master rank 16 you can equip pretty much every item in the game bar a few exceptions such as special mods like riven mods it's also worth keeping in mind that this guide is being recorded and produced before the release of warframe's next major update the new war so if you're watching this guide after the new war update has come out make sure to check the more recent videos on my channel to find out if anything new has been added that affects the new player experience one last note before we get into the guide if at any point you get lost and you don't know what to do next in warframe you can jump over to my stream at twitch.tv forward slash Eiflin. I stream every single day apart from Sunday. So if you're stuck or have any questions, just jump in the chat and ask me. All right. So as soon as you bit into the game, you're going to be thrown into Warframe's prologue quest called War's Prize. This quest is going to have you pick your starter Warframe, your starter weapons, and repair your spaceship to full functionality. When it comes to the choices of your starter Warframe and starter weapons, what you choose really doesn't matter because everything that is offered in this quest is available to get quite easily later on. But if you've watched this video before starting the game, I recommend picking up Excalibur and the Scana Sword. For your secondary weapon and your primary weapon, choose whichever your preference is. The Vor's Prize quest should be pretty straightforward to complete on your own without me covering it in this guide. But if you are stuck, all you have to do is go to the front of your ship, sit down at navigation, and then click the X symbol with the circle inside of it, and then press the quest. This should automatically start the next mission that you have to do to complete the quest. Once you've completed the Vor's Prize quest, the game basically opens up and lets you do whatever you want. And this is where most people get lost because they don't have any direction or any idea on what they're supposed to be doing. Our number one goal as a newer player to Warframe is to complete all of the nodes and unlock all of the planets on the star chart. To do this, we have to defeat Spectre enemies on these things known as junctions. You can find a junction between each and every planet. Each junction has a set of requirements or challenges that have to be completed before you can enter it and defeat the Spectre enemy that waits inside. After Vor's Prize, the only planet that you've got access to is Earth, and the next planet that we want to go to is Venus, because we have to do things on Venus and on Mercury, which Venus leads to, so we can get to Mars. We have to complete all of the missions leading to the Venus Junction and complete all of the Venus Junction's requirements before we can enter it. So if you hover over the Venus Junction, you'll see that it asks us to complete the Vor's Prize quest, which we've already done, collect 20 mods, apply 4 mods to a single Warframe or weapon, and finally upgrade a mod to rank 2 or higher. Now you might be asking yourself, Flynn, what is a mod? A mod is basically like a card that you can get from killing enemies and completing missions that you equip to your Warframes and weapons to make them stronger. Mods dropped by enemies look a little like this, and then whenever you complete a mission on the results screen of that mission, you can see all of the mods that you got from it. Modding is a very important part of Warframe, as mods are what determine how powerful your frames and weapons are, and what they can and can't do, which is why there's such a heavy emphasis put on modding at this first junction. What I want you guys to do is play and complete every mission that you can on Earth. While doing this, you should get the 20 mods that's needed to complete the requirement on the Venus Junction. The missions on Earth are going to introduce you to a fair few of the game's game modes. Some are easy, some are a little complicated. You should be able to get through all of them just fine with the Lotus explanation, so I shouldn't really need to go in depth with any of them. But the only one that I would maybe avoid is Interception, because it's a mission where it has four flags, enemies are going to spawn in waves, and because you're a near player, you're not going to be able to kill all of the enemies fast enough to stop them from capturing the flags. You've got to hold on to the flags so you can get enough points to complete the mission, so you're just going to get overwhelmed, and you're probably going to fail the mission. So I would avoid interception missions for now. As you're completing these missions and killing enemies, your Warframe and the weapons that you're using are going to be leveling up. Now, this is important because the higher level of Warframe or weapon that you have, the more mods you can equip to said Warframes or weapons. This is especially important to us right now because one of our junction requirements is to equip four mods at once to a single Warframe or weapon. Once you've completed a few missions, go to the arsenal that you installed during the Vor's Prize quest, hover over either your frame or weapons, and then press upgrade. This is going to take you to the modding menu where we can equip mods to our weapons or Warframes. 
Now, if you take a look at any old mod, I'm going to be using Vitality in this example, you'll see that it has a number, a shape, and a few circles or balls at the very bottom, along with the effect that the mod has on your frame or weapon. The number is the amount of capacity that the mod needs to be equipped to a frame or a weapon. You can view the amount of capacity your frame or weapon has at the top left hand corner when you're on the modding menu. The shape is called a polarity. We've got a number of different polarities in Warframe, but the basic ones I like to call a V, a D, and a dash. If you're able to match the shape of the mod with the shape on a blank slot in your frame or weapons modding section, it will half the cost or the amount of capacity needed to be equipped. Try to throw on any old four mods just to get the Venus Junction requirement done and out of the way. You want to do this before doing the upgrade of mod junction requirement because upgrading your mods increases the amount of capacity that they need to be equipped. Once you've equipped four mods, head over to the modding station that you installed during the Divorce Prize quest, select any mod, and then press Fusion. Press the plus sign under the mod once, then press Apply Fusion, and congratulations, you've just upgraded your first mod to rank 2. You'll notice that one of the little circles or balls at the bottom of the mod lit up. This basically resembles how many times the mod has been ranked up, and then the dimmed out ones resemble how many more ranks there are until the mod is max rank. After ranking up a mod, if you've been following along and completed some of the missions on Earth, you should now be able to take on the first Spectre enemy on the Venus Junction. Head over to your navigation, select the Venus Junction, and get ready to fight the Rhino Spectre. You shouldn't struggle at all killing the Rhino Spectre, but if you do, back out of the junction, then equip some more mods to your Warframe or weapons. Once you've defeated Rhino, you'll gain access to Venus. Venus is basically the same story. We have to work our way through the missions on Venus to get to the Mercury Junction while also completing the requirements or challenges for it. The Mercury Junction's requirements are defeat Jackal on Fosa, complete 10 waves of defense on Tessera, rescue a hostage on Linea, and defeat five Eximus enemies. So as we're progressing through Venus and completing missions, we have to go to the node Tessera and complete 10 waves of defense in one run, and then rescue a hostage on Linea. When you're doing the defense mission on Tessera, once you've completed five waves, you're going to be given the choice to either leave or stay. Make sure to stay in the mission because if you leave and then just replay the mission again for another five waves, the 10 waves challenge won't be completed. You have to complete the 10 waves in the one run. Completing the rescue mission shouldn't be too hard because it is just a rescue mission. The best tip I can give you though if you're struggling is to not wait around for the hostage. If you speed through the mission when you save them from their cell, they're going to teleport behind you and then avoid taking damage. If they end up going down, obviously turn back to revive them because if you don't, you're going to fail the mission. After you've completed your 10 waves of defense and save the hostage on Linea, make your way over the Fusa as quick as possible. Along the way there, you should have just casually killed the 5 Eximus enemies that you needed to kill for the junction requirement without even noticing, but if you were unlucky and they didn't spawn for you, Eximus enemies are enemies that have like a red glow around them and they normally have some kind of elemental effect or buff. You can get them to spawn quite easily on the extermination mission called Egit at the start of Venus. Once we've made it to Fusa, this is when we take on the real first boss of Warframe. On Fusa, you can find the boss called the Jackal. He might look intimidating at first, but he's quite an easy boss fight. Just keep on shooting his legs and eventually he's going to curl up into a ball and start rotating around shooting out four lasers from below him. To avoid these lasers, you can either run away from them or you can join the Cool Kids Club and bullet jump over them by crouching, looking up into the air and then pressing the jump button. Once he's done with his laser attack, he's going to fall down from the air and then he's going to go into a down but not out state. You can walk up to him now and stab him with this thing called the Parazon, which is basically a hidden blade ripoff from Assassin's Creed. Rinse and repeat this process until you've done it four times and boom, you've killed your first actual Warframe boss. At the end of the mission, you're going to notice that you got a part blueprint for the Warframe known as Rhino. You're going to get either the Neuroptics, the Chassis, or the Systems. 
if you want you can replay this mission until you get all three part blueprints as we're going to need them later on to craft the rhino warframe or you can progress forward for now and then come back later whenever you're stronger if you find this fight too difficult or too long for your liking if you've got this far you may have noticed the pop-up on your screen telling you that you've qualified for the mastery rank one test if you've qualified for it go ahead pause the game press mastery rank up and then press begin test the first mastery rank test is quite simple kill the bad guys and then kill all the bad guys until the test is done and then congratulations you're now mastery rank one after killing the jackal you should be able to enter the mercury junction where you have to kill the vault specter again this fight should be pretty simple but if you're struggling back out of the junction throw on more mods or you can upgrade the mods that you've already got equipped by going to your modding station implying you've leveled up enough to keep those mods equipped when they're leveled up once you gain access to Mercury, while you're at your navigation, press the X with the circle inside of it at the top right hand side of your screen and then start the Once Awake quest. We have to complete this quest to access the Mars Junction. This quest is just as straightforward as the prologue quest, so you shouldn't need my help to complete it. Just play through it at your own pace. After the Once Awake quest is completed, make sure that you've completed the node called Susie on Mercury, as this is another Mars Junction requirement that we need to take care of while we're still paying attention to Mercury. Once Susie is completed, we're heading back over to Earth. The last two things that we have to do to complete the Mars Junction requirement is to defeat 150 Frontier Grenier enemies on Earth and to collect 500 Ribido, which is a resource that drops on Earth. The mission that I recommend playing for both of these requirements is called Everest on Earth. Everest is an excavation mission where drills are going to drop from the sky. It's your goal to protect and pyre these drills until they're done. Once the drills are done, you're going to get a reward. To pyre the drills, you're going to be killing enemies that are carrying a battery on their back. It's going to be quite obvious who these enemies are. You kill them, they drop the battery, you pick it up, you run over to the excavator, and then it is going to uh, just consume the battery out of your hand. And that's going to add, I think, 20% pyre to it, uh, just off the top of my head. And you just need to do that until it says pyre full on the left-hand side of your screen below your map. And then you just let it go until the timer runs out. To get to Everest, you're going to have to visit the Plains of Eidolon for the first time by going through this place called Cetus. In Cetus, there is a bald man that stands next to a big gate. He's going to give you a bounty to go and do. Pick up the bounty from him, head into the Plains, complete the bounty, then go back to the big gate that you used to enter the Plains. Then you can pause the game, leave Cetus to go back to your ship. You're going to be able to track the progress of the last two requirements by just hovering over the Mars Junction. And then once you've completed both, make your way towards the Mars Junction by completing Eurasia, then enter the junction and kill the Frost Spectre. Now, I'm not going to cover what we have to do on Mars in this video because there's a lot more to it and we're running short on time. But I'm going to give you guys some homework to do before we move on to the next video. So in Warframe, there are missions called spy missions where you have to steal data from three different data vaults. These three different data vaults hold different rewards and which reward you get at the end of the mission is determined by how many data vaults you opened up in one run. We have these things called drop tables or rotations in the context of endurance missions where different milestones will give you different rewards from different drop tables. So in a spy mission, if we only opened up one vault and failed the other two, we would get a reward from drop table A. If we opened two vaults, we would get rewards from drop tables A and B. But if we opened three, we would get rewards from drop tables A, B and C. What tier of drop table your spy mission pulls from depends on the tier of the planet. Low level planets such as Earth, Venus, Mercury, Mars and Phobos are all considered to be tier 1 planets so they pull from the tier 1 drop tables for all game modes. On screen now you're able to see the tier 1 drop table for spy missions so what this means is that the spy missions located on Earth, Venus, Mercury, Mars and Phobos all drop the same items with the same drop rates. So what I want you guys to do is play spy missions on any of those planets until you get the Ivara Prime Systems Blueprint, the Hornet Strike mod, the Serration mod, the Vicious Frost mod, and the Volcanic Edge mod. All of these items that I'm asking you to farm drop from drop table C, so that means each run you're going to have to open up free vaults to have a chance at getting one of them. You're going to be playing a lot of spy missions as all of these items share the same drop chance and it's totally down to RNG whether or not you get them. 
Playing a lot of spy missions early game isn't necessarily a bad thing because it can be a good source of XP for your frame and weapons as the data vaults that you're going to be stealing from give a decent chunk of XP if done undetected. I wouldn't stress out about doing it undetected though, in fact I'd recommend doing the spy vaults as fast as possible, detected or undetected, as the more you do them, the more XP you're going to get and the more chances you have at getting the items that you want. Ever since I started talking about the spy missions, I've had some spy mission gameplay on screen, so hopefully you're going to be able to mimic what I do or at least pick up some tips whenever it comes to completing these vaults. If you need a list of all the must-have mods in the game, I have a page over on my website that will be linked in the description below, so go and check that out. Alongside every single mod that I've got listed up there is my recommended way of farming the mod, so hopefully that helps you out. But with all that being said, that's it for the video. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, subscribe for more Warframe content, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.